Hi friends, every religious traditions have their own sacred scriptures or books, like Hindus have Vedas and Muslims have Quran. Similarly, the Christians believe that this Holy Bible is our sacred scripture. What is this Holy Bible? Contrary to the common understanding among the non-Christians, Bible is not a single book but a collection of books classified into two groups of Old and New Testaments. In fact, the word Bible comes from a Greek word Biblia, which means books in plural. Now, regarding the number of books in the Bible, unfortunately, there is a disagreement among the Christians today. The Protestant Bible typically have 66 books, Catholics and some of the Eastern churches have 73 books. And some churches have even more, like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church having 81 books in their Bible. Thus, we have half of the Christians today using the Catholic Bible and a significant number of people using the Protestant version of it. How come this difference of number of books in the Bible? Regarding the books of the New Testament, there is no confusion. More or less every Christian today have the same number of books in the New Testament. The difference is all in the Old Testament. Regarding the origin of the Old Testament, I will be creating another video. Today I'm going to talk about New Testament canon. For those who do not know the word canon, it comes from a Greek word which means rule or a measuring stick. And when it comes to Bible, the word canon refers to the list of books in the Bible. One of the main assumptions which Christians of today's generations make is that the version of Bible in their hands is the authentic word of God. Many of them make this claim even without having a proper study on it. Some say it's all about faith. Then what about Muslims? They have the faith in their Quran and yet Christians do not accept it. So it's not about the faith alone. There are numerous things we need to understand how this New Testament as we have it today came into our hands. Especially because the Bible itself does not give any list of inspired books. The books of the New Testament was decided neither by the Bible itself nor by any apostle of Jesus but by the early church which was nothing but a body of believers in Jesus. So how did the New Testament canon came to be? After the death of Jesus, his disciples went around preaching the good news everywhere and in every way possible because they believed that the second coming of Jesus was imminent and hence it was their responsibility to preach the good news to everyone in no time. Hence, they didn't even think about writing things down. But as the time went by years after years, they slowly began to understand the need for writing. The first such writings of the New Testament were the letters of St. Paul. He wrote letters to various churches instructing them how they should behave as good Christians. It was a new means of reaching to the people without even visiting them. Meanwhile, as the time went by, as the apostles were being martyred one by one, they really understood the importance of written documents so that the people whom they have not met even from the generations to come can know about Jesus and his teachings. The first one to write about the life of Jesus was Mark who was a disciple of Peter. Later Matthew and Luke also wrote their own versions of course in light of Mark's gospel. As a clarification, gospel means good news. It is a word used for referring the ancient books that narrates the life and teachings of Jesus. Today there are four Gospels in the Bible. The Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Since Matthew and Luke used Mark's Gospel as a reference, all of these three have many things similar, hence we call them Synoptic Gospels. The fourth Gospel was written by John, who was the favorite disciple of Jesus later in time. He wrote his gospel to an audience who were already familiar with the first three gospels. Luke, who was a disciple of Paul, also wrote another book regarding the history after Jesus, the beginning of the Christian church, which we today call as the Acts of the Apostles. There were so many other Christian writings in the early church. For example, the Catholic epistles, the letters of Clement, Didache, the book of Apocalypse or Revelation, the shepherd of Hermas, the gospel according to Thomas, the list goes on and on. 
After the time of the apostles, the early church was left with a big list of books. And the question was, which of these were authentic and inspired by God? The apostles themselves did not give any list of inspired books. Some say today that for a book to be inspired, it has to be mentioned in other books of the Bible. But it is not true. Not every book of the New Testament have that privilege. Not only that, there are some books referenced in the New Testament which are not part of the canon today. Example the book of Enoch. Therefore, the evolution of the canon is really interesting and will help us to understand the authority of the church even on defining the sacred scripture. Various churches in the early history had their own canons and needless to say were different from one another. Thus there arose the real need for having a definite set of books. But how do we define them? So when we talk about the New Testament canon's development, it is good to define two periods in history. The period of discussion and the period of fixation. The period of discussion lasted from AD 220 to 367. It was a period in which various church fathers attempted to have an official list of books of the Bible. One of the notable attempts was by Origen. He classified all the books available at his time into three categories. Firstly, those which were universally accepted. He included in this category all the four Gospels, 13 Pauline Epistles, Acts of the Apostles, the first Peter and first John. In the second category, he included all those books whose apostolicity was in question. These were the letter to the Hebrews, the second letter of Peter, second and third letters of John, the letters of James and Jude, Didache, Barnabas and the Shepherd of Hermas. Personally, Origen had accepted these books also as inspired, but included into the second category because there was no consensus regarding these books among the Christian churches. Rest of all the other books of his time, he added into the third category of Apocrypha. Another important list of this period was given by Eusebius, who was a disciple of Origen as well as the Bishop of Caesarea in Palestine. He also classified the books into three categories like his master. But in the second category, he classified the books into two, superior and inferior. He referred the letters of James and Jude, the second letter of Peter and second and third letters of John as superior and wished them to be part of the universal canon. Thus, although there was a consensus among the Christians regarding the four Gospels and the Pauline letters, various churches had their own opinions regarding the rest of the books. Then came the second period, the period of fixation spanning from AD 367 to 405. The first reference of the exact number of the New Testament books as we have it today was the Easter letter of Athanasius who was the Bishop of Alexandria written in AD 367. He mentioned all the 27 books of the New Testament as already canonized. But this was the case only of the Alexandrian church. Other churches still had their own canons. For example, the Church of Rome was silent about the letter to the Hebrews, James and 2 Peter. It was in this contest, the Church of Rome took an initiative to define the books of the New Testament once for all. The Pope Damasus called in a council to sort things out in Rome in 8382. He called in Jerome to help the council. Since Jerome was in the East, he was already acquainted with the canons in the Eastern churches and himself was a great biblical scholar. This council presided over by the Pope himself defined the books of the New Testament officially and the further discussions were closed. As the famous saying goes, Rome has spoken, the matter was closed. Subsequent councils held in the African cities of Hippo and Carthage confirmed that this canon was binding for them as well. The Eastern churches also accepted this canon, although they had some problems with the book of Revelation initially. The next important period regarding the canon was the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther rejected the books of Hebrews, James, Jude and Revelation in order to justify certain theological positions he took 
such as the principle of the justification by faith alone. Some Protestants even rejected the second letter of Peter and second and third letters of John as well. This new tendency of rejecting the books from the Bible was not good for Christians. The Catholic Church countered this by convening an ecumenical council in the city of Trent in AD 1545 and reaffirmed the decisions of the Council of Rome. However, as the time went by, almost all the Protestants recognized the need for having the same canon as defined by the Council of Rome, of course without referring to that council. Thus today, almost every Christian have the same New Testament canon. So what were the criteria which the church used while defining these books? Number 1. Apostolicity Whether these books had apostolic origin or not. Apostolicity does not mean that written by apostles themselves, but written in the period of apostles. Thus the Gospels according to Mark and Luke are included in the canon. Some Protestants say the apostolicity was the only criterion. But is it so? Then what about the letter to the Hebrews and the book of Revelation? How come they are included while the letters of Clement and the book of Dedashe were excluded? This leads us to the authority of the church. Church being the body of Christ with its authority defined which books are inspired and which are not. Of course, some Christians had already accepted this list of books even before the church defined them officially in 8382. But the universal acceptance of this list occurred only after the Rome had spoken. Those who are hesitant to accept this role and authority of the church deliberately ignore the importance of the Council of Rome. The same spirit which worked through the first Council of Jerusalem worked through the Council of Rome as well. And this was the real reason why we have the 27 books of the New Testament. So next time when you have your Bible in your hands, remember it was the gift of the church to you. And don't forget to be grateful to God for his church on earth and the works of the Holy Spirit in the church councils. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel for more videos. God bless you all.